Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Dawn Shade. Dawn Shade is brought to you by Highborn Games. It's for one to four players, ages 10 and up, and games range anywhere from 60 to 150 minutes. Welcome to the world of Dawn Shade. You are a Patarkin, a small, some would say insignificant race of creatures who dwell in the corner of the Galeswood Forest, away from most of the world and all its goings on. Your race possesses the ability to glide short distances. Compared to other creatures of the Dawnshade, this is about as useful as a powerless boom shot. But that as it may, you have been called by the High Eldress of your village to form a kinship tasked with protecting Kimber Bow, a flaxen-tailed Patarkin you've known since you were very young. She is said to be the one who, with the aid of the Watchers, will restore the balance to Dawnshade. One thing is certain, you and your fellow adventurers are about to embark on a quest like no other. The objective of Dawnshade is to defeat the major threats, causing imbalance in the world. The major threat quest tile is placed at the bottom of a randomized quest deck. Each time you play Dawnshade, a new adventure awaits. You and your kinship will be exploring the world, completing events to earn rewards, visiting outposts to help you on your way, encountering Watcher Temples to gain favor from the Watchers, and facing battles that will test your strategy. The choices you make and how well you complete challenges and develop your character will determine how prepared you are to face the major threat once it's revealed. Now, before we look at anything else about setup or even how some of the basics of this game work, first let's talk about this logbook. Because this game really is a choose your own adventure style cooperative game. And this logbook is super impressive. Tons of story in this game. And as you do certain quests or as certain quest tiles come out, you will be referencing this logbook, reading the story and then making a choice and that choice may lead you to great rewards or great catastrophes. So the thing definitely impressive about this game, just tons of story here, and really how this is laid out and how the different levels happen and so forth is just really impressive in the storytelling of this game. So keep that in mind as you play through the different quest tiles and as you make choices. So there's a fair amount of setup in this game. We're gonna hit some of the high points, some of the really interesting bits, the Vaki board, let's take a look at this because this is where the watchers will be basically aligning with you to give you the different elements. And why do you need these elements? Well, when we get to the characters, you'll see that the characters have cards, special abilities and things that require these different elements to power them up. And the more you have, the bigger and better different levels and so forth, you'll be able to use these special abilities. But depending on the player count in the game will determine how many get set, how many of these elements get set into place on the Vaki board. And you have some trackers around here that you'll be using throughout the game. Now, interesting here in the middle, this is a cooperative game, so you have these abilities to level up. And you have the threat token. So the threat token will be basically incrementing as you move through the quest tiles in order to bring out the ultimate threat. Now, depending on the level of difficulty in the game will determine how many threat points you can withstand before that ultimate threat hits. And then you have your other, you have your XP token and level token. And again, since you are playing cooperatively, you're kind of sharing in this board together. And so these alignments on this board, on this Vaki mat, represents your alignment with the watchers and potentially what types of gifts you will receive and may trigger the narrative from the logbook. And then you have this quest map. So the interesting thing here is that you have this kinship token. And kind of to illustrate that this game has some dexterity elements to it, is that you can flip it onto the board to see where your starting tile will be. And that's where you'll start the adventure. Now, why is that important? Because you'll need to reference the guide to determine where to place the Watcher's Blessings. So these Blessings are going to be based on where your start tile is. And they are very useful throughout the game. You want to collect them as much as possible. Now, you're, you have different types of quest tiles that you're going to be assembling for each of these adventures. 
and there's a, again a handy guide to show you how many of which type of tile that you're going to put into the stack and then you'll shuffle those up. Also knowing that the ultimate threat tile will be always be at the bottom of the stack and you'll have your start tile which you'll place under the kinship token and that's really kind of the basics of that quest board and then you have your battle board and what's interesting here too is that you will be doing battles based on your stats and your different level of character but there's also some events and things that are going to happen that are going to also use that dexterity element in the game which we'll take a look at in a minute so those are the three main boards that you're going to be employing or using throughout the game now along with that battle mat you're going to have a round tracker that you'll be placing and your targeting deck that you'll put above the battle mat now for these characters they all have stats like you would expect but they have these cool cogs to keep track and they're really pretty neat actually a really fun tactile feel to the game and it, they hold in place and just a great way to keep track of your stats in the game now, each character also has their uh, helpers and their main character chip, as well as their own dice. Now, there's also a cube for tracking your overdrive, and there's ability cards for each of the different characters. So when you power up with Vaki, you can tap into these different abilities, which is pretty slick. So those are the basics there for the characters. And of course, there's standard dice for everybody. There's defense dice, attack dice, and Vaki dice. And also, there are items in the game. So you have level one, two, and three items that you can buy and sell. And of course, money in the game and so forth. And those are really the basics, along with the different monsters that you're going to be facing in the game. Those chips are here as well. So let's dive in and take a look at some of the different things you can do on your turn and some of the neat aspects of this game. So the phases of a turn are pretty basic really. You're going to be moving your first player token on and then you're going to be moving into the quest areas. And what does that mean? Well, you're gonna move along the path for any tiles that already exist or you're going to be flipping new tiles. And when you do flip new tiles, you have to place them in a way that they connect properly. But if you can land the tiles where there are blessings, blessings are super helpful throughout the game. So you should really use them and tap into them as soon as you can. So that's your next step. Now, for every movement that you did in the quest board, then you're going to have to adjust your threat level accordingly. And again, based on the level of the game, the ultimate terribleness is going to come out as you reach that threshold. And then you're going to engage in the quest that you landed on or whatever quest tile that you've landed on. We'll take a look at some of these in a sec. But that's really the basics. And then if you get rewards, that would be the last step of your turn. All right, let's take a look at some of these quest tiles. This is the meat of the game as you move into these tiles and do all the different things. Now, we're not going to dive deep into all of them, but let me give you a couple least of my favorites. But... The neat thing about the start tile is there's a narrative up front to read and go through for the start tile. And as you go back to the start tile, every time you return there, you're gonna get two XP. Again, XP is gonna eventually let you level up and give you more skill points and things. But the thing here is that you have five different types of guild halls that you can tap into throughout the different tiles, but also any of those five guild halls are available to you in the start tile. So the big one is potentially the mercantile because you're going to be buying cards and you'll take eight from the tier one deck, especially if you're just starting out. You'll be in the chapter one and so forth, the level one tier. So you'll deal eight of those cards out and everybody gets a chance to buy from there. Now, how are you buying? Well, you have money. Money of the realm is called Twani. And that money can be used in all kinds of different ways. But really, you can buy and sell these items. But again, you have to be, pay attention to your stat because your stat will dictate how many different items that you can hold. And the cards have a sell and buy value on them. And these really do enhance your characters. So shopping is pretty advantageous. You also have the guild hall, which allows you to spend skill points for your characters. And then you have the tavern. And this is really a way to gamble away your hard-earned 20. Ever, the, the game here for gambling is really kind of just a push-your-luck game. It's actually pretty fun. But let's take a look at some of these others. So hopefully you didn't gamble away all your money at the tavern or your 20 because 
One of my favorite outposts is the foundry because for 3020, you can buy this mechanized behemoth, which is the cog behemoth, and basically giving each of the players a, a section of this giant robot to control. And you'll be adding that to your stack along with some shields. And basically, the thing is going to protect you as, it as you take damage. But the neat thing here is as each of the sections are destroyed, they might do additional things to the enemies out on the board, causing them damage and so forth. But it really is a powerful mechanized suit that you're all wearing, so to say. And the thing is, is that it really only has enough energy for one play, but it is so worth it, it is so fun. And then you have your cog fighters, which are kind of similar, they're much smaller, they just basically provide you basically a human shield, so to say, and they'll give their life for you instead of you, instead of you taking the full damage. So that's pretty slick. And of course, then the foundry also allows you to turn 20 into Vaki. So that's a pretty handy feature as well as you try to basically power up your ability cards. However, my favorite outpost, I think, has to be the Boomshot Gallery. First thing you'll do is take the battle mat and flip it over. You'll see all the potential prizes that you can acquire. These are all kinds of things that can help you throughout the game. Now, the thing here is that you're going to have to pay for every shot taken. You're going to be flipping or flicking your uh, Cogbots into the prize arena, so to say, and you're going to be trying to gain the different prizes in there. Now, wherever your Cogbot lands, whatever it's closest to, the center of, that will be the prize that you gain. But remember again that you have to pay 20 for every shot taken. It's just a fun mini game in that outpost. And all these outposts might have rewards and things that you need to acquire as well, which you'll consult the logbook for. Now there's also event quest tiles. And when you move to an event quest tile, you read the corresponding narrative in the logbook. Many times these events will have branching paths, which adds to the story quite a bit. Each path may have a positive or negative outcome, depending on your performance or one of the many challenges you will face during an event. Now, there are three different basic types of events, really. These are stat challenges, cogbot challenges, and treasure trap challenges. After completing an event, the kinship will receive 6 XP during the earn rewards phase of the turn. Now, many of these events will be dexterity challenges, like the treasure or trap challenges, where you have to roll your cogbots and avoid the traps to gain treasure. Or the cogbot challenges, which is Donshade's favorite pastime, kind of like battling tops, so to say. Loot Shoot is a neat one as well because it pits the players against each other for item drops. All the events are super thematic to the game, but only two events will ever appear in your quest per adventure. There are several different types of events, of course, and they can really change up the game, but the real question is, do you have the 20 to spare? And there's standard travel or journey tiles that you'll be placing out as well to move between areas. And you have the Watcher's Temples, and based on how you're aligned, will do different things. I mean, there's so many things these quests can do. And remember, in the reward phase, based on what you did, is going to net you experience, and hopefully getting you more skill points for the ultimate battle at the end. Speaking of battles, you will be fighting creatures. And the creatures have their stats on the back of their tokens. You'll be creating their stacks as well, placing them out in the battlefield. And this is where the bag comes into play. This is the initiative order. You'll be placing the enemy's tokens in there and your player tokens in there, and you'll be drawing them to see who attacks who first. And this is where you're gonna be using your dice and maybe your different abilities. And you're gonna be attacking back and forth, using defense, you know, hitting the monsters and hopefully surviving, or using your cogbots, or perhaps the giant mech robot that you've acquired from the foundry in order to battle those creatures for the end of the game. Now, you know, this quest and the logbook have so many things that uh, there's just too much to cover here. Now, if you want more details, definitely go look at their Kickstarter page and take a look at the, at the rule book because a lot of these mini games and, and events and things are just so fantastic. And there's just so many of them, I can't cover them all here in the short amount of time we have. But just know that this game has so much going for it. I 
had a blast playing. And I only played solo, and I don't do a lot of solo games. The solo experience was just as fun. I can't wait to play it with a game group. So definitely give this one a closer look. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. Everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, there's a lot going on in this game. I really like the different quest tiles and how all those evolve and take you through the adventure. And the story and the narrative and the choose your own adventure aspects. This game has a lot of things that I love about gaming. But ultimately, folks, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.